Part of what these movements are about is about ordinary people doing extraordinary things because they decide to take action. From 1968 to 1973, an organization in Chicago under the codename Jane performed abortions and administered healthcare information to women in secrecy. The group's efforts of safety and confidentiality made for a reliable service while simultaneously providing women with the rights they believe were deserved. The Jane Collective's facilitation of safe abortions conflicted with and took direct action against national abortion law in the 1960s in an attempt to empower women at a time when personal reproductive freedom was limited. Abortions, after being common practice in modern society, were banned in the late 1800s in the United States. This ban launched the start of illegal abortions, which were usually performed in unsafe and unsanitary conditions, often leading to other medical problems or death. Good evening. Tonight, the subject of abortion. The illegal termination of pregnancy has reached epidemic proportions in this country. The conflict between the law and reality has resulted in a national dilemma. This detrimental practice continued into the 20th century where fiercer argument began to arise against it. The conditions brought upon women in the 1900s paved way for illegal abortions to become an epidemic. Birth control wasn't available, and neither were informational services for much of the 1960s and years leading up to it. After the landmark Supreme Court case, Griswold v. Connecticut, which allowed contraceptives to married couples, the battle for reproductive rights started to gain traction. In Chicago, a branch of this civil rights movement found many of its members in the activist organization, the Chicago Women's Liberation Union. This group focused on many social and civil issues and served as a platform for injustice. And inside this organization yet, another group was born. The Abortion Counseling Service of Women's Liberation, which eventually began to be known as the slang name Jane, found many of its members in the CWLU. The Jane Collective's mission of action was fueled by the belief that women have the right to choose and receive safe and humane abortions, even if their views were conflicting with the government's. The founder of Jane was Heather Booth, a former student of the University of Chicago and part of many social justice organizations including the CWLU. Her involvement with the legal abortion service began in 1965 when she was told a friend of hers was pregnant, suicidal, and needed an abortion. She found Dr. T.R.M. Howard to perform the abortion for this girl and the procedure went successfully. Booth said she didn't really think about it again until someone called her months later because word had spread that she had provided this service. From here, she negotiated a deal with Dr. Howard where she would refer girls to him and then check up on them after the procedure to make sure they were okay, both mentally and physically. As time went on, the small, original referral service found itself growing and evolving into something bigger than Booth could have ever imagined. As more and more requests flooded in and positive reviews started to spread about this uncommonly secure service, Heather Booth began to turn her small referral service into a true organization. To make this transition, the women involved took on new jobs. Members found simply referring the women to other doctors was impersonal and irresponsible as they could not ensure the safety of the women at all points of the operation. To combat this, Jane decided to take this uncertainty into their own hands. While some of the members had professional medical training, many obtained a sort of informal training through the organization itself. Through testimony, members of Jane say a professional gynecologist helped them learn their skills, putting his medical license on the line. Instead of referring women to other illegal doctors, they gained the skills to perform the medical procedure themselves. Instead of being dependent on others, the group was now truly independent and truly involved with every aspect of the operation, including the counseling, abortion, and the subsequent checkups. The lives of the women were on Jane, and that was not a job they took lightly. The Jane Collective pushed the boundaries of Illinois and national laws in almost everything they did. To the members of the organization, the need for this type of service was evident through the lack of political change in the country. The women knew they needed to take the action themselves instead of waiting for the government. 
As more stories of the collective grew, they became known less as an illegal abortion clinic and more as an alternative female healthcare organization because of their safety practices, low prices, and lack of judgment to the women. The members of Jane wanted abortions to be safely accessible to all, no matter the money or situation of the patient. The publicity for the organization was mainly word of mouth, but also found its way onto underground newspapers. I remember this ad in the newspaper that said, pregnant, need help, call Jane. So I called Jane. To obtain an abortion from the organization, a woman would call the group and ask for Jane on the phone, referring to the all-inclusive name Jane Doe, to ensure the security and secrecy of her request. To prolong this security, Jane was forced to compromise the typical medical necessities and ideal space for the confidentiality that they relied on so heavily. Instead of hospitals, their operation was based out of two apartments, the first of which held the code name The Front. The first apartment acted as a waiting room for the women, where their family, friends, or significant other could wait. Jane also provided childcare services for mothers that could not find anyone to care for their young children while they received their abortion. The second apartment, labeled The Place, had a counselor to comfort the women and hold their hand while the procedure was being performed. Each member of Jane had different jobs. Simply entering the organization didn't give one access to information or responsibility. Jane member Laura Kaplan explains their setup as a series of concentric circles. The closer you were to the center, the more you knew and the more responsibility you had. But what everyone participated in and said to be the most important job was the counseling. They set up meetings at night, which they made sure had a social quality to them. The women receiving the operation were given tea, sat down, and had the procedure completely explained to them, which instruments they would use, how it worked, and what they could expect, none of which was information given to women in a traditional medical setting. Jane's personal quality contributed to its success. The group worked on a level of equality with their patients, treating them more like sisters or co-workers. It demystified the abortion. It made it accessible, understandable, real, ordinary, difficult. But it wasn't mysterious. Jane performed these services from 1968 to 1973. Throughout these five short years, the group is said to have served over 11,000 women without any deaths and only faced police intervention once in 1973. Jeanne Gallitzer Levy, a member that was working the front the day of the police raid, says she heard a knock on the door, and when she opened it, two homicide detectives were standing before her. The cause of this police raid was said to be an enraged family member of a past patient that didn't approve of the woman's choice. In this ordeal, no patients were arrested, but seven Jane members were, who later became known as the Jane Seven. These women were indicted by a grand jury in 1973, but their case was saved from going to trial by the Roe v. Wade decision legalizing abortion, which occurred soon after. This is the CBS Evening News with Walter Cronkite. Good evening. In a landmark ruling, the Supreme Court today legalized abortions. The majority... The group's instruments were confiscated, but with the new court decision, they didn't need to serve the public any longer. They disbanded, acknowledging that they had achieved their goal and women now had public access to a safe abortion. The political turmoil of topics like abortion caused conflict for the women of Jane, who truly believed in the right to choose. The members of Jane, while performing abortions, declared themselves not pro-abortion, but rather pro-choice. The importance for a woman to have freedom over her own body was the driving force of this organization that risked everything to serve others. We met someone before they were going to do this. We gave them a chance to talk about it, and we told them what was going to happen. There were lots of points along the way where they could have said no, changed my mind. Because you do think about it a lot. I don't think anyone chooses to have an abortion lightly. Some members of the Jane Collective have come out with their story and their involvement with the organization, and some have remained in the shadows. The important work of this group, though, is something that cannot be hidden. The thousands of women served and helped give testimony to this group of women who took direct action against national law, sacrificed their own legal safety, and made an impact on the nation.